ओम अज्ञान तिमिरांदस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुर उन्मिलिता मेन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभिष्टं समस्तं एन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यं ददाति स्वपदांतिकं वंदेहं श्री गुरो श्री युता पदकमलं श्री गुरुं वैष्णवांश्च श्री रूपं सागर जातं सहजन रघुनाथान्वितं तं सजीवं साद्वैतं सावदूतं परिजन सहितं कृष्ण चैतन्य देवं श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुत देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरभ्य कृपा सिंधु पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्री अद्वैत गदादर्शि हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगु लंगाते गिरी यत्पात हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीनतारिण हरे कृष्ण विल कंटिन्यू अवर स्टडी ऑफ चैप्टर थ्री चैप्टर थ्री इज टाइटल karma yoga it teaches us how to perform work while living in this world so we discuss the first section uh, arjuna after completing chapter 2 he asks krishna he was he was doubtful whether he should be fighting or not fighting even after hearing all the instructions he uh, he was confused he he felt that the instructions were equivocal so he asks this question and then krishna tells arjuna what is better for him what is better for him to fight rather than uh, giving up the fight so krishna for uh, krishna tells arjuna for you karma yoga is better to you are a kshatriya to perform this fight is your dharma and for the right reasons so perform karma yoga but in case you cannot perform karma yoga then you can perform karma kanda uh, which involves because karma kanda also involves performance of duty what is the difference between karma yoga and karma kanda anybody remembers from what we discussed before anybody remembers you can unmute yourself and uh, speak prabhu ji karma kanda is like nish uh, sorry karma yoga is basically hmm renounced activity right activity without the expectation of any fruits correct um yes. and karma kanda is fruitive activity very nice very nice archana was very nicely answered karma kanda means one performs actions with fruit in mind he want phala peksha it's called phala peksha when one performs action without any fruitive results in mind just as a duty that becomes karma yoga right karma yoga through karma you are able to connect yoga means to connect with god right so through karma you can connect with god when you are not uh, attached to the fruits how do you do that you need right understanding right and develop right consciousness with that that's how you become uh, non fruit to mentality right uh, so how do we do that for example uh, we all uh, you know perform outside you work for some software company or some you know some hospital or whatever right so all of us have certain occupations but if we per we perform it such that we consider all the results that come from the duties that we perform are not for our own enjoyment it is you know ultimately meant for our own spiritual growth that's that's how if we see and use it accordingly then that becomes karma yoga yeah uh and arjuna sorry krishna tells arjuna 
even if you are qualified to perform jnana yoga jnana yoga where one completely renounces work right uh, it is better to perform karma yoga because by performing karma yoga you set a very good example for the world because people want good examples they want to see people who perform without attachment duties they without attachment that way they become they can find examples so that they can follow in their footsteps so krishna even if you says even if you are not qualified for jnana yoga still you perform karma yoga yeah <clears throat> yeah and then a uh, question comes whether by performing karma yoga will one get liberated krishna answers that yes through performance of karma yoga you can get liberated you can achieve you know uh, freedom from the modes influence of the modes of uh, nature yeah and uh, further uh, i mean this discussion will go on arjuna keeps questioning further in the future uh, he would ask uh, you know when we perform work there is a great danger to become attached or you know uh, to get entangled and uh, krishna explains what is that that would cause that attachment or you know and he, he primarily he tells that lust is the reason for uh, you know the lust is the real enemy of this world when a perform, per, performs when a person performs work lust is the one that binds him to this you know fruit of results because everybody works with a fruit in mind with a lust for the fruit in the mind right so and how to get out of that will be answered uh, further in the future verses okay so i'll not go at this time we'll discuss that later so we discussed uh, krishna gives different answers on why you should perform karma yoga rather than jnana yoga and then in the next section which we'll discuss today 10 to 16 krishna says if you are not qualified for karma yoga then practice karma kanda so that's what we'll discuss today further let me just go over the verses okay mm. so ninth verse yagnardat karma no anyatra lokoyam karma bandhana tadardham karma kaunteya mukta sangha samachara nitin prabhu can you read this yes prabhu work done as a sacrifice for vishnu has to be performed otherwise work causes bondage in this material world therefore o, o son of kunti perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction and in that way you will be always remain free from bondage mm. so this was saying how to perform work any activity do you do do it in the name of god that's what it says is it so then naturally we avoid bad karma right you won't drink wine or you uh, try to enjoy in this world because that cannot become a sacrifice right um, so naturally uh, because any work you do causes bondage because why if we don't remember god when we perform work we get into bondage because anything we do we are dependent on god in this world isn't it like um, any work you do the resources the energy everything is supplied for us we don't really own anything in this world isn't it we are like a trustee we come to this world we are given parents we are given natural resources we are you know there is air there is water there is sunlight without which we cannot do we pay any taxes for them we don't right we freely uh, breathe air if we were to pay taxes imagine right you know sometimes uh, you know even in corona people are using ventilators and you know how much hospital charges per day in india i mean it's india is very cheap right uh, even in india my mother went through corona uh, you know experience and uh, they would charge 15000 per day 
fifteen thousand rupees per day. I know by that example. Uh, and what does ventilator do? It just supplies better air you know, in a way that you the patient can survive in the time of suffocation. So it's like that. I mean, we take for granted all these natural resources. We don't feel grateful. When we don't feel grateful, uh, right? We become indebted. And so that any action we perform without any gratitude towards God becomes binding to us. <clears throat> so uh, I'll tell a story. Right? So there was a story of one uh, very uh, rich man. Uh, the rich man would uh, every day supply bags of grains to the poor people in his village every day he would uh, come to the top of his building and you know present these bags to the poor people he would throw it and anybody who can get it he would take it right that's how it is and uh, and uh, over time people forgot where it is coming they are only searching on the floor where it is and i'll just grab it and take it uh, like that people stopped uh, recognizing Uh, where it is coming from one day uh, his uh, you know he has a secretary his secretary suggested tomorrow instead of bags of grain throw rocks <laughs> uh, so the rich man does that next day and as soon as rocks are thrown all the people uh, on the floor on the ground floor actually they start complaining hey who is throwing rocks and uh, all of them throw back the rocks at the rich man who was you know the charitable man who was throwing so like that people don't recognize god when everything is supplied we just take it for granted we try to get the best of what we what is available and uh, no gratitude at all and when things go other way you know when challenges come in life we blame god isn't it many people if god is so kind god is so this why is there is corona right <laughs> it is to make us turn towards god and understand where what what he is doing for us right sometimes we need to be jolted to come to our senses and that is in a way good right because ultimately if you are attached to this world keep on collecting the bags of grain forever you become more and more greedy lusty envious of others who are also competing with you and you just remain a fruitless person in this world you know completely bonded to this world keep coming back to this world so these are all necessary things for us the difficulties challenges that are come to us they are actually doors opening our they are like you know opportunities that are helping us to connect with god that's how we should see when karmically things are not going the right way all of us have to go through right we our sanchit karma coming from the past we never know what it is and we don't know what's in future for us isn't it so accept this grace everything we should accept with grace and be grateful to god in all circumstances yeah so prabhupad further explains about varnashrama Uh, how everything uh, everything is done for vishnu you know you know why vishnu therefore one has to work for the satisfaction of vishnu any other work done in this material world will be a cause of bondage for go- both good and evil work have their own reactions and any reaction binds the performer therefore one has to work in god consciousness to satisfy god vishnu and while performing such activities one is in a liberated state because if you are not attached while you are working it is actually liberated state the liberation means not anything you know that's why chanting is a liberated state stays when you perform chanting without you know completely focusing your mind on the name of god so that's a liberated state that's the great art of doing work yeah in the beginning we require guidance 
but when we are able to all of you are doing regularly now you know when we chant together uh, and if you have questions on how to improve we can discuss that so that's that's how it is sahayagna praja shrishtva puro vacha prajapati anena prasavi isya dhvam esa vostva ishta kama dhok yeah anyone else can read please i can read prabhu yeah sweta mata ji uh in the beginning of creation the lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for vishnu and blessed them by saying be thou happy by this yagna because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation mm. so in the beginning of creation when the material world is created this material existence is one part of the you know entire cosmos creation right and there are billions of such material universes when when this you know the fifth canto of bhagavatam very vividly describes the entire creation process it's it's not just a random you know blast that created this universes it, there is a very scientific process that you know that's undergone that that's very well explained in canto 5 of shrimad bhagavatam canto 2 also discusses a little bit and we are actually having a new temple constructed that shows this whole mechanism in a very nice way in, in my poor west bengal but anyway so in the being, beginning of creation the lord of all creatures refers to brahma ji sent forth the generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for vishnu and bless them by saying be thou be be thou happy by this yagna because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation so if you look at any of these uh, scriptures any uh, vedas right vedas have many many prescriptions on so this is all karma kanda section means people who want to perform this karma kanda rituals to gain wealth fame you know, and all these things okay and so in the beginning of creation lord has arranged uh, you know demigods and and these yagnas for the demigods to be performed by the men so who are demigods demigods they are not gods they are not god but they are representative of god just like there is a president and there is a cabinet president we suppose you know just a example for us it's not real it's not any comparison but president if suppose president is like god then there is a cabinet who works under presidents what's the purpose of cabinet because president himself uh, uh, will not be engaged in every uh, department he would expand himself in the form of these demigods uh, sorry in the form of this cabinet ministry to undertake various departments you know, the responsibilities of various departments so similarly devatas right indra varuna vayu vinayaka all these devatas they were all appointed by the lord there are 33 crore demigods to take care of this one material universe right so there like this cabinet ministry that would take care of providing the necessities for the uh, the lower living entities like human beings like us you know all the living entities in this world not only human beings every living entity animals everybody needs um, you know necessities isn't it so this is simply like when a child is born the parents before the child is born itself they would arrange for a you know car seat for example here right when the child is born the first time you take him out of the take her or him out of the hospital you need to have a uh, child seat right and then 
the parents would buy cloths parents would have some you know uh, you know bedding and arrangements at the home dresses all these things pre arranged isn't it why because parents want to take care of the child so similarly lord being the father of all the creatures he would arrange for the basic necessities of all the living entities like all of us so for example elephant eats you know 30 kilos of grass every single day who is providing for it are we arranging no it is arranged by the nature so there is a perfect arrangement for every living entity's sustenance in this world every living entity they don't need to really you know um, work in a software job but their food is arranged huh? um there are any uh, like you know very big animals like timingala fish you know every for every animal there is arrangement for sustenance in this world so similarly lord has when he sent us to this existence you know to exist in this world to fulfill our desires only why did he send to this material world to fulfill our own enjoyment and propensities so we all have certain propensities to so you, we are all sent here so that we can you know fulfill our desires and how does how is the arrangement there is a cosmic harmonious arrangement between our selves and the demigods who are the providers for everything in this world existence if we you know if we supplicate to them if we pray to them if we you know work in cooperation with the demigods the natural supplies are all supplied to us very um, you know as much as we need that's the arrangement that lord has desired and wanted for us so one may wonder who are these demigods do they really exist and uh, you know do we really uh, you know how do we know they really exist hmm? uh, just because prabhu ji your voice is breaking okay your voice has been breaking a little bit yeah my connection is little weak prabhu sorry uh, oh, okay can you hear now is it better yes prabhu yes yeah so <clears throat> so uh, one may wonder do these demigods exist you know all that we know about demigods is we watched in movies right how indra would throw his uh, you know his uh, his uh, what is weapon and how he you know creates rain that's not i mean that's a basic depiction that's not exactly how it works the mechanism is far more complex um but uh you know uh, that's a simple that, that's not exactly you know Uh, but demigods do exist uh, how do we know uh, so bef- behind any uh, just because something is automatic does not mean there is no controller behind it for example all of us see how rain falls isn't it rain uh, how how rain occurs there is water on this earth uh, and sun evaporates because of, because of the heat the vapors rise and then clouds form and when the cloud is condensed rain comes isn't it that's the mechanism in this we are not able to hear uh one second let me try to disconnect any other give me one second okay prabhu ji Hare Krishna can you hear me better now Yes little better bro Yes Prabhu ji 
because at the same time my wife class also goes on uh, oh krishna okay <clears throat> and then my children are watching something cuz we both are busy and they are so small they need some engagement hari <laughs> bol yeah and challenges okay um so where are we yeah demigod existence right uh, just because we um, you know we cannot see something we see that something is automatic does not mean there is no controller behind it um for example uh, we we i'm talking about the rain right rain forms you know the, we know the mechanism of how rain works so there are scientists who worked on this experiment to create artificial rains artificial rain means there are certain areas where there is no rain they want to create clouds and make the rain fall on that land right so they tried this but you know the whole process of you know injecting uh, uh, into this clouds and you know make the cloud move and uh, you know to fall, uh, get the rain at the same place it was simply extremely difficult, very costly they could not they finally gave up you know in us they experimented in germany they experimented they finally gave up the whole uh, idea of trying to create rain by at you know through artificial rains because it's not the whole it's not easy to uh, duplicate the nature's mechanisms easily uh you know uh, so from this we can understand not everything is just anything automatic that we see uh you know works just by without any controller we all know right for example um, you know sometimes in big hotels or even uh, offices right when you go the door opens automatically a child may think a oh, door just opens automatically whenever i come you know there is no nothing behind it but actually we know that there is a sensor that detects that there is a person individual came and then it sends the signal to some you know back end motor mechanisms that would move the lever and the door opens isn't it so there is a complex me- mechanism behind arranged Um, and uh, you know by inference we know we, behind every great design there must be a great designer isn't it so by through inference we can understand there is logically there is something that is working behind to make all this work naturally that there is a perfect arrangement for day time and night time uh, you know uh, another simple mechanism right as soon as the baby is born there is milk in the breast of the mother until then there is no milk and after 2 years there won't be milk but right at the time the baby is born there is a natural arrangement for the milk for, for the mother from the mother similarly you know everything is arranged very perfectly in this world and we can understand there must be you no know, like you know we can we all say right i mean if you see a computer will you accept that it came by chance no we accept that it must be coming by by the brain of some you know great designer so similarly this um, no this existence of demigods can be understood in a similar way we may not be able to see them they may not be in the physical form that we know we can perceive uh, so they exist at a subtle level and uh, these people are arranged um for our you know uh, as as mentioned here they were arranged to fulfill our purposes in this world there are two ways um to fulfill our desires in this world one is uh, i explain this in my ppt i'll show you yeah so how do you manipulate nature right ultimately you want uh, nature to provide what you want right so one is by supplication means through prayers you understand this whole cosmic manifestation works uh, with supreme lord at the top and then there are there are these devatas who are 
working under him to provide the necessities for us and you pray to them you know, just like uh, you know working with a, your local mla or you know your local minister to get you know, certain supplies to your village for example right so that is supplication method the other is manipulation method so you just look at the mechanisms and try to rig the mechanism and fulfill your desire that's also possible you can uh, you know we try to create you know uh, these fertilizers that you know artificially we do many things isn't it to manipulate the nature i give the other example the other day i gave the example of water supply if you all remember right you remember anybody i gave this example of uh, you know villagers asking for water supply to their village and uh, they can either petition to the government and get legal rights uh, you know to have a pipeline added to their village pipeline sent to their village that's one legal way and uh, villagers would keep on paying the taxes and they would keep on getting the water supplies that is a legal way of getting rain the other mechanism is to get the rain so, so to get the water oh this pipe is going through from this village to other village and so say there are some dacoits in the in between in a forest between the villages oh this pipe is supplying water we want water you don't want to pay tax so you just make a hole and get the water that's other way isn't it so that's like ma- manipulate manipulation manipulative way of getting things done so meddling with nature to get what you want that's what most of the science is focused nowadays so that is manipulative we don't know how this the, what is the origin of this and what is the purpose of this we don't care any of that we are just focused on our own gratification we want to enjoy this and we just focus on how to rig the system and get your way that's exactly that's mechanistic way of approaching things right um, the other is a uh, personalistic way personalism we understand there is this universal harmony there are these suppliers you perform certain yagna and legally get things done for yourself the other is middle with it you see the mechanism break the system and get your things done and each of them have their own consequences it's not like uh, there is no there is nothing wrong in going the ma- manipulation way right there will be consequences for everything that's why we see there are so many natural disasters that have keep on happening right to can remind us that there is there are things that are controlling beyond your you know power of control yeah and uh, most of the people to in you know in today's times they don't really think that um, you know uh, this kind of thinking that demigods existence these are all like, you know world type you know they don't really exist because they could not be proven scientifically right nobody can prove the existence of demigod scientifically because why why we cannot prove with through science we can always infer but we cannot prove it we can neither prove or disprove because that is subtle that is a subject that exists at the subtle level and all the tools that we have are gross and they only deal at the uh, you know very gross level no we don't have any tools that can uh, you know all the tools that we have in our hand are only material materialistic so we cannot fathom anything that is subtle or spiritual i'm not even talking about spiritual i'm just talking about subtle we can't deal with um, anything that is at the subtle level with the tools that we have right <clears throat> and many people think if if i am of scientific bent i should not be believing in god or demigods uh, you know their existence because science does not approve of it but actually it is not so science in itself is simply a tool 
it's like a map in a map if you are focused on a certain goal door right for example you took a map and that focuses on go existence of gold ore in the country and all you see is gold ore only you don't see um, petrol reserves in a map where you only see gold ore science provides a map of seeing things in this world and you can see what you want to see it does not exclude the existence of other things you know that that's where people confuse because they hear certain mechanisms of how rain works everybody can understand through science the mechanism of uh, how rain works but they cannot replicate because there are things that are controlling beyond what the the mechanism itself implies you see what i'm saying we hear about how a child is born but can we create life by ourselves we cannot we cannot scientists have been trying for centuries to create life in laboratory without the help of embryo or you know the seedling the natural seedling they could not they could not even create a mosquito for that matter right so just because you understand mechanism does not mean you can replicate the process because there are things beyond the control of what science can um, deal with science that we know how can deal with at the same time as i said science is a tool it can help us th see things objectively but just by knowing certain things do not think that there is nothing beyond that that is the way people get lost and there are people there are so originally science was created actually to glorify god if you look at newton inventions and all newton was a was one of the greatest scientists ever existed in the world isn't it after newton we hear about einstein in the recent time but newton was the greatest scientist few centuries back and for that matter he spent a you know the least amount of his time in his re scientific research he was a avid reader of scripture especially bible and he, um, and his his all his discoveries were only to prove how great is god that was his main purpose behind it before behind all the and later on he didn't continue for scientific he, he rather rather he focused on you know um, spreading the wisdom of you know scriptures right and that's how science originated science originated to prove the great design that existed in this world to prove that there is a great designer behind everything uh, not just to be fascinated by the design but rather to prove that there is there is a great designer behind all of this the glory of god that's what he says in all this we can see the glory of the god uh, that was the original intent of science but later on especially in the last century there are there are atheistic scientists that have started who actually you know there are right wing atheists they use science as a tool to actually to prove that there is no god science as a tool ca can be used to make progress in spiritual science or material science you can choose the field field is up to you but they focus on material science that is fine but but because they know some mechanism they think that there is nothing beyond it that's where the mistake happens you see i mean this is a very important topic for us to understand uh, you know the existence of god and the demigods just because we are, we understand mechanisms doesn't mean much there are things that are far beyond our control isn't it um, and even the scientific understanding doesn't hold for very long because science is an unending uh, you know um, you know quite changing field isn't it the science that we know at new you know, you know the newtonian mechanic mechanic uh, mechanistic principles don't exist as of now isn't it uh, now einstein came and he 
uh, uh, Newton focused on macro, uh, macro science, and then Einstein focused on micro science. Uh, so, it, uh, when it comes to micro systems, the the mechanisms that held well uh, describing the cosmos and the larger scale objects, the, the same laws don't work as it is. So, you know, Einstein came up with a uh, different theory to prove how nature works. Um, so in this way, uh, and then in the future, definitely there will be another scientist who would come better than Einstein and he would prove a much deeper understanding of how nature works. But again, these are all look, these people are all looking from the uh, only the material side of it. That doesn't explain everything. Because the, the spirit is the one that is controlling everything. So all these explanations hold good to a better degree, but not the best degree. But if you look at the science that is given in Gita, it has no additions. It has been the same. It will remain the same forever, for thousands of years to come in the future also. So that's the difference between the spiritual science and the material science. And... Prabhu? Yeah. Uh... Uh, sorry, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So in the device class also, there was a, one of the good example on Einstein and how he was explaining and convincing his atheistic friend. Maybe if you want to add that. that's a... Oh, yeah. So that is a Newton example, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's a Newton example. Oh, the planets arranged. Planetary systems. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Please. Uh, so I can explain that. Yeah, so yeah. Newton once invites his atheistic friend to his, you know, to his home for dinner. And uh, at the time, uh, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for reminding me about this. It's a very good, uh, you know, very good point to discuss at this point. He invites his friend to dinner, and his friend comes. He is a great scientist also, but he doesn't believe in God. Newton is a avid uh, follower of Scripture, as we discussed already. And uh, when his friend comes, he shows him a model of the universe. You know that that is mechanically made on his desk. So uh, that uh, there are planets in that uh, model. The planets would be rotating uh, in their orbit. It's a very nice model that Newton uh, you know, created. And his friend comes and asks him, "Wow, this is such a wonderful model of the cosmos." Newton, how did you create? How much time did you spend? Who created this? He asks. Uh, then Newton says, oh no, I didn't create. Nobody created. It just came by chance. And then his friend says, no way, I, I won't believe Newton. How do you say that it came by chance? It is the, the planets are orbiting in such perfect orbit with such precision, without any collision. You know, there is, things are in such balance, I won't believe that this would have come by chance. Then uh, Newton says, no, my friend, you don't believe that this simple model that exists in my, you know, on my table was created by, you know, chance. How do you believe that this entire cosmos that runs in such perfect, perfect with such harmony and perfect order is created by chance. Then his friend actually accepts that there must be a greater brain behind all this, uh, you know, all this existence, without which we may not be able to understand. It may be beyond our thinking, but there must be some, there must be some, uh, you know, arrangement done by you know bigger brain, you know, intelligent design behind it. Right? We can all infer the same from that example, isn't it? So that's how he proves that there must be God. You may not be able to see. There is a different process because just because you don't know doesn't mean that there is no president. You need if you are able to find some service, some work to your president, and you know certain behavior. If you do, you may become friends with your president. Then you can see him, but. Just by sitting in your couch, you cannot claim, oh, there cannot be any president because I don't see him. There is a mechanism. The mechanism that we 
discuss, uh, we discuss is chanting is a mechanism that helps us to slowly harmonize ourselves with god at in after enough purification could be years could be decades at some point we can perceive god very easily it's very easy to um, perceive god at that point so you need to follow the right mechanisms to get there but until then accept the scripture scriptures are saying there are demi gods krishna is saying just like when you are in eighth grade you learned about atoms electrons you never you never questioned oh i don't see atom why would that exist if you do that you would fail in the test isn't it you accept imaginary numbers because they help solve some problems in the future all these things were given to us and we accept them isn't it why do we accept on the authority of these great mathematicians or great scientists that have done the experiment have proven that so what did what is the baseline for us why do we believe that there are authorities that have given us this and so we accept that authority isn't it so similarly the spiritual signs coming in a parampara is also given to us by authorities when we accept that when we accept in good faith and follow the process we would achieve the same result that they have seen so as the student progresses say when he goes to college or maybe in phd after going to phd classroom he can get the required apparatus to actually perceive an atom in his laboratory but until then from his 8th grade until phd when he is 28 years from 8 years until 28 years for 20 years he has to just keep the faith on and then when time comes he can experiment for himself and see it isn't it is that not how it works we do that we do that already but when it comes to god we question whether you know there is god exist i don't believe i don't believe this i don't believe that many people say i mean all of you are very good people you are already cultured and you know all of you accept that but even if you have doubts that's why we discuss this concept in depth so that any kinds of doubts would be nullified you should not have any doubts about the existence of demigods after this class hmm? so we learn by at this point we learn by inference right so how do we believe that the atoms exist because when we accept the atomic theory and perform certain experiments we get certain results that are consistent with the primary the basic characteristics of the atom that we have studied in the beginning so by we cannot we may, need not see but through experimentation we get the inference if atom has this this particular chemical has these properties it must produce certain results so by the results we infer that this exist so similarly how do you know the soul exists within us consciousness a dead man is not conscious but a living man is conscious so if pinch any person who is conscious he says i have got pain because his the soul within the heart spreads his consciousness throughout the body and so we are conscious just like there is sun in one place the entire cosmos gets the light right how do you know that you know sun exist because there is light here in my room i don't need to sun, see the sun itself sun may be behind a cloud but i know because there is light there sun is in the sky i don't need to see the thing to actually prove everything to myself i can infer many things and when i infer and i accept in good faith and follow a process at one day we get the realization that's how anything science works we accepted mathematics and you know science it's the same way there is nothing it's no different this is spiritual science this is experimental science sorry experiential science science we know is experimental science what is experimental science you perform certain experiments and get the results to prove that the original original statement is correct right 
you say certain statement you you observe you perform certain experiments in the laboratory from the data you get the results you get you prove that your original statement is correct that's how science improvises itself isn't it gather from all the data that you already have all the current scientific evidence and you make a new statement combining all the statement and to prove that you perform certain experiments and you come up with some results and prove that yes this works this way isn't it so similarly spiritual science also works similarly you in this in spiritual science your bo- your heart is the laboratory the mechanism is chanting and hearing like all of you are hearing you learn the knowledge this is like before the experiment you need to learn the process of experimentation isn't it before any experiment you need to learn how to perform the experiment so you learn it and when you learn it you actually follow the process and you get the result at the end of it so similar i mean you get the experience in that you you got you perform exer- experiment to prove it you get the experience when you when you advance spiritually you get the experiences that show that you actually all that you have studied the in the scripture is actually correct okay i'll not spend more time on this any questions on this so far i hope it was helpful any questions no questions very good dis- uh, explanation prabhuji thank you very much yeah okay uh thank you so now this is the idea behind i i went little in depth because suddenly the word demigods is introduced and many of us of course we may believe but still i wanted to sign give some scientific understanding so that we become really convinced of what we are discussing at this point so okay? prabhu I, i just had a one question sorry it just came late in my mind um when uh, the creation ha- happens uh, by brahma mm. the uh, all the create uh, elements comes together and then living entities get a body now uh, as you are explaining that a matter or a material bodies that usually human entities get is in the our planet planetary system and demigods gets a subtle body is that correct or yeah they get subtle body so we also have subtle body <laughs> but yes. they are made of primarily subtle body our subtle body is mind intelligence and ego right right suppose we don't have this gross body mm-hmm. subtle body alone if we have mm-hmm. it is it is so free you know um subtle body is so much subtle that you know things can get done so faster in the, with, with that right so demigods okay. will have subtle body they are primarily made of uh mind and intelligence okay mm. so they don't have material body basically okay so mm. only the human yeah, the, we have the body made of earth water air either and uh, right yeah they primarily are sorry brahma ji is completely intelligence is the most intelligent only person. only intelligence okay the only intelligence pure intelligence pure intelligence right mm. thank you prabhu ji yeah i mean this is a little higher subject we won't discuss that in this uh... yeah yeah sure sure i just wanted to yeah and we Thank study bhagavatam we discuss that yes yes hari krishna yeah so what the material creation by the lord of creatures is a chance of for the conditioned souls to come back home back to god head all living in it is so that's the purpose the whole existence happens is is there is as a chance to condition souls like all of us ultimately to go get liberation and go back to god okay understand the real purpose behind all of this existence that way we don't we don't uh, uh, you know uh, what do you call we don't miss the goal behind everything there is a perfect arrangement 
for our ultimate goal, which is to go back to God. Yeah. All living entities within the material creation are conditioned by material nature because of their forgetfulness of their relationship with the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Vedic principles are to help us understand this eternal relation as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Vedas to survive Ahameva Vedya. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita at a later point that the Lord says that the purpose of the Vedas, the purpose of the Vedas is to understand him. This is the only purpose of the Vedas. Of course, Vedas has so many sacrifices on how to you know, get a good living standards in this world. But that's not the real purpose. That is, uh, that is created so that you can be happy in this world. Doesn't mean that's the purpose. The real purpose is to understand him and go back to him. You can read all of this. It talks about in the age of Kali, the Sankirtan Yajna is the recommended is recommended by the Vedic scriptures and this transcendental system was introduced by Lord Chaitanya for the deliverance of men in this age. This is for us. Sankirtan Yajna. This is the Yajna for Kali Yuga especially. And it is described in Srimad Bhagavatam 11th Canto, 5th Chapter, 32nd verse. There is a direct verse that talks about Sankirtan Yajna. Krishna Varnam Fisha Krishnam Sango Pangascha Parshadam Yajna Sankirtana Prayay Yajanti Hi Sumedha Saha Can anyone read for me? Yeah, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. In this age of Kali, people who are endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the Lord who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Sankirtana Yajna. Other Yajnas prescribed in the Vedic literatures are not easy to perform in this age of Kali. But Sankirtana Yajna is easy and sublime for all purposes as recommended in Bhagavad Gita also, verse 9.14. So in Kali Yuga, see, this is the Kali Yuga, in the age of Kali. People who are endowed with sufficient intelligence is not material intelligence on how to manipulate matter, spiritual intelligence, will worship the Lord who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Sankirtan Yajna. So this is actually a reference to uh, the appearance of Lord Chaitanya who appeared about 500 years back. Uh, so in this, what the yajna is prescribed? What is the prescribed yajna? Sankirtan. What is Sankirtan? To chant the name of Lord. Loudly. Japa. Japa is not, uh, I mean, it's a wing of Sankirtan yajna. But Sankirtan yajna means chanting the name of Lord continuously. By That is the yajna that is prescribed for this age. So, um, we can achieve the highest perfection by following Sankirtan Yajna, by practicing Sankirtan Yajna. Devan bhava yat yatanena te deva bhava yantuva parasparam bhava yanta sreyah param avapsyata. The demigods, being pleased by sacrifices, will also please you. And thus, by cooperation between men and demigods, prosperity will reign for all. So, basically, he's, Krishna is telling, so I have arranged these demigods and uh, when they are pleased by your sacrifices, when the demigods, you perform certain uh, yajnas and you know the demigods are pleased and by the cooperation between men and demigods, prosperity will reign for all. So when we perform sacrifices, uh, prosperity will reign for everybody. You know, this is how in the Vedic times, uh, especially 
there is panchmaha yagna that everybody every home does that i don't know if you are coming from brahminical background you would know uh, at at you know at the home itself every day they they do pancha mahayagna the whole purpose is uh, because in this world in this world when we walk or when we breathe or when we eat uh, we actually commit lot of violence unknowingly you know? unwantedly unknowingly we commit violence we kill so many uh, microbes and we you know there is so much of uh, there is so much of uh, harm done to the uh, other living entities could be microbial could be very small nobody can live sustain in this world without committing a violence isn't it so by performance of this panchmaha yagna in vedic times that would protect oneself from the reactions of committing these simple actions of course this is done without any intent but still there is some reaction so in kali yuga you can just chant the name of lord that is the easiest way by which you can perform the same yagna that was performed in vedic times uh, to avoid any kind of karmic uh, you know implications okay so it's it's such an important thing to perform yagna one is to develop yourself spiritually the other is to actually protect you from all karmic reactions so here proper nicely explains about the position of demi gods and uh, how all the natural supplies were given to us by uh, you know the demi gods demi gods are not the creators of these air light water and all things they are all given by arranged by god but they they are empowered just like the cabinet minister is empowered to certain to perform to control certain supplies so similarly these demigods are controllers of certain natural supplies in this existence which is required for our maintenance of body and soul it does not mean that they really depend on our sacrifices uh you know for example um what is a good example in this case um yeah one time in vrindavan um the you know all the brajavasis they they actually stop their sacrifice to indra and indra would stop giving rain to the vrindavan village of course there is a reason why uh you know that whole story happened uh, krishna wants to curb the pride of uh, indra but the whole point is uh uh it, i mean it it hurt his ego indra's ego was hurt when uh, he was not given the sacrifice uh you know by the vrindavan vasis uh, so he actually you know sends very you know powerful range to that village and tries to destroy everything in that uh, village and he gets punished by krishna in that whole process but uh, the idea is the, the demigods are not dependent but if we if we reciprocate they would be very happily giving back giving us back what they have yeah the the performance of yagna has many side benefits ultimately leading to liberation from material bondage by performance of yagnas all activities become purified as it is stated in the vedas aahara suddha sattva suddhi sattva suddha dhruva smriti smriti labhe lambe sarva grandina vipra moksha by performance of yagna once eatables become sanctified and by the eating sanctified food stuff once very existence becomes purified your existence becomes purified by purification of existence finer tissues of memory become sanctified your mind becomes purified and when memory is sanctified one can think of the path of liberation now all these combine together lead to krishna consciousness the great necessity of present day society so our doors for liberation would open when we perform yagna 
see the you know how the effect of one is there on the other istan bhogan hi devo hi vo deva dasyante yagna bhavita tair dathan apradaya yabhyo yo bhumte stena eva sa can anyone read is prabhu yeah uh, in charge of the various necessities of life the demigods being satisfied by the performance of yagna will supply all necessities to you but he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief very nice right because we enjoy so many things in this world we we breathe we drink water and you know we eat food of course we may say oh the farmer is growing and we are paying price for it but still how is farmer is able to grow the nature is supporting isn't it so we need to acknowledge the ultimate origin of everything the air the water we should not just uh, you know take things for granted so when we acknowledge when we become grateful and actually perform sacrifice the easiest is for us is to just chant the name of god like we are doing every day right and uh, when we do that actually all so you see here all the necessities will be supplied to you you will never have scarcity in life you just continue chanting the name of lord you will never have to go through uh, you know scarcity in your life that is guaranteed but he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to demigods in return is certainly a thief why is he a thief thief steals things which do not belong to him isn't it and he does that illegally so if we don't acknowledge all that we receive from nature we will also become thieves who are the demigods is explained the demigods are authorized supplying agents like ration depot and all right so they are like that demigods are authorized supplying agents on behalf of the supreme lord vishnu therefore they must be satisfied by the prescribed yagnas hmm? performance of prescribed yagnas in the vedas there are different kinds of yagnas prescribed for different kinds of demigods but all are ultimately offered to the supreme lord the uh, demigods are not going to keep the results of the sacrifice to themselves they would actually again pass it on to the lord for one who cannot understand what the supreme personality of godhead is sacrifice to demigods is recommended you may not understand who god is but at least accept that there are these demigods and offer sacrifice ultimately what one point you would come to know and understand more about god himself yeah how the yagnas are recommended differently for different people is explained um, yeah, even for you see here for example the meat eaters are recommended to worship the goddess kali the ghastly form of material nature and before the goddess of sacrifice of animals is recommended you can sacrifice animals before her but for those who are in the mode of goodness the transcendental worship of lord vishnu is recommended but ultimately all yagnas are meant for gradual promotion to the transcendental position is the for ordinary men uh, panchamaha yagna for devotees you can chant the holy name that is the best yagna yeah so uh, proper further explains how everything comes you know all the natural uh, you know provisions grains fruits vegetables milk sugar for all of these things come from nature This is a beautiful verse. We'll end with this. Yagna sista sina santo muchante sarva kil visai bhunjate twa agham papa ye pachanti atma karanat. It's a very uh, we memorize. Try to memorize this verse if you can. Anybody can read for me. Uh, 
यस प्रभु जी द डिवोटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड आर रिलीज फ्रॉम ऑल काइंड ऑफ सिंस बिकॉज दे ईट फूड विच इज ऑफर्ड फर्स्ट फॉर sacrifice others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat only sin hmm. so what is recommended here is any time you cook food always in you know what is a prayer offering to god means what just understanding that accepting the fact that god you are the provider of this food and in gratitude we want to offer you be to be the first recipient of this food that we cooked right now so who is supposed to get the food first the one who is supplying isn't it like suppose uh, you know we went to a hotel with our friend okay A friend is a very rich man, so he wants to pay the price. Okay, uh, and he took ten people, and uh, all of them sat down, and uh, the supplier came, and you know all these guys ordered whatever they want, and ultimately the food came. Okay, suppose the food that was ordered by the the rich friend is not hasn't come because of whatever reasons it's not available in the supplies will the other people just oh we got it doesn't matter whether our rich friend eats or not let's eat fast before you know uh, what is that called that's really simple isn't it they should first give a little bit of what they have to his friend because he is the one who is actually uh, ordering for the day that's a natural reaction isn't it we acknowledge right that that's how we should approach anything in this world isn't it that's a basic gratitude without gratitude forget there is a, we will never be happy in this world uh, so that's what you know when we of course we buy stuff but doesn't mean that we are not uh, we don't we don't acknowledge god in this whole thing so whatever we cook we want to offer to god before we actually accept uh, for our own enjoyment okay so that's what this means hari krishna prabhu ji i do have a question though but isn't this all god's right like this is all his so and you know and so offering to him like that i mean i don't when we think about it it just seems lame because it's all his anyway <laughs> so suppose um what's your daughter's name oh my son's what? name j j j right uh huh it's not like uh, uh you know suppose uh you give him some pocket money every every week okay mm-hmm. one day on your birthday he he brings a very nice gift that you like say your earrings you like earrings for example <laughs> <laughs> he he goes to shop with his friend tries to find the best earrings and gets for you okay mm-hmm. even though it is coming from your money will you be happy when he gives you or not yes i would be happy why you may think you may say oh this is my money only what is their point you enjoy it right? why are you giving me no because say, the thought right the act the yeah that's exactly is the reciprocation mm-hmm. uh, you know lord is not in hung is hungry for our food right he's he's hungry for our love mm-hmm. as children of god he wants to have that loving relationship with us so in this whole process when we acknowledge he's so happy that's all mm-hmm. we're making god happy just like your son what's his name samar jay jay we call him jay at home. Yeah, yeah, sorry jay yeah so Jay gives you a gift that makes you so happy every day. Isn't it? So similarly, um, when when we acknowledge God, we make God, and that purifies because we get the blessing of God in the whole process, isn't it? And naturally, when somebody eats without acknowledgement, he gets sin also. <laughs> because he didn't acknowledge where it is coming from 
he thinks that he is the enjoyer but be the enjoyer he would give you he would be given another life to you know counteract the sins okay so we we'll end the with that so prabhu ji there is also another example i'm thinking is uh, think about a king in the palace and everybody uh, want to make sure that we cook for a king and he takes a food first before anybody else if any servant takes a food before king then that would be a uh, breaking breaking the law and he <laughs> i mean he's like he's kind of he can be called as a thief in that case it's <laughs> yeah, a very good example thank you you can tell right. yeah so if somebody is working uh, for king is supposed to serve king first isn't it before he enjoys himself right thank you right yeah <clears throat> prabhu ji i also have a question what is a practical way to implement this are we supposed to like chant before we begin consuming our food what, what is the recommended practice there yes mother ji archana ji thank you for this question actually i should have clarified myself so ideal way of uh, you know accepting uh, food is accepting it as prasadam okay and how prasadam is made prasadam is made by cooking with the you know with the satisfaction of god in mind you cook rice dal sabji rasam whatever right you cook at your home all of us cook and uh, in gratitude you first the first plate you keep a separate plate only for you know offering to krishna or you know vishnu whoever which are form you worship at home and make this plate for him first and you can offer to him and chant certain prayers will tell you the prayers and give him 10 minutes to consume and then take that now it's called bhoga when you offer to god it, it's called bhoga it's for the pleasure of god and you take it out and mix with the food that becomes prasad you you any simple items you can offer to god just simple rice and dal is fine um okay so this is the easiest process of uh, you know uh, participating in this yagna it you don't actually main purpose is the intent you don't even need the prayers and all those are all supplication additional things but if you follow that's good but at least the minimum thing is the only you know there are certain restrictions because when you are offering suppose you are cooking for somebody you need to understand what they eat what they don't eat isn't it so krishna for god we cannot cook anything non vegetarian main thing okay and there are some minor restrictions other than that uh, it should be uh, it should be the the vessels that you cook cannot be where you cook for you know non veg and all you should be very careful about that um, besides that we also don't um, consume onion and garlic those two things um, i mean if you are if you are still eating them if you are currently eating them uh, it's okay there is nothing wrong but you can cook some minimum item rice and just you know plain dal without onion i just offer that first before uh, you know mixing onion and other things okay that's also people do sometimes that's one way to begin at least so that's the okay. whole process mother so first cook first plate always goes to god at least once a day if not you know you cook two times you may not offer both times at least morning or morning or evening whenever you you know you have more time to do these things you can cook these two items in a small plate that is only for god just offer him that's it that's the simplest way you can practically do this at home okay thank you prabhu ji hari krishna prabhu ji i do have a question like in india they i mean this may be just a belief right they say that if you start something you have to continue this right like every day Uh, so what if like so that's what i am hesitant about like what if i cannot do a couple of days right in the week like does that mean that that's again sin that you offered a couple of days but did not uh, so at this point that is fine what you can do at the time if you are in a hurry 
you can mentally offer you know at least x krishna i wanted to offer you you know with more with more time available but at this point i'm not able to because mm-hmm. of the urgency of the situation and you mentally offer for one minute you know as if you are making a play in offering him and you know praying to him praying to him to accept it and then just give like couple of minutes and take it out in your so we can offer fruits also right uh, yes, every day i used to you know when i was work, you know i was you know before marriage i used to just offer dry fruits every day yeah that's what we are doing now prabhu ji like we just do five types of uh, like dry like nuts and then raisins that we just get from costco and just keep it in the puja area and offer that every day yeah that's a good beginning if you can offer your rice and dal sabji or some whatever you cook mm-hmm. that next step yeah okay. it's a you know gradual process there is no hurry to change the rules of your home right now <laughs> slowly gradually increase the standard definitely eating everything that is offered is next level than just offering few things and eating them right also one thing i want to add here so before eating from our plate first uh, putting in putting in mouth yes govinda that's what uh, they they taught us yes uh, yeah. that is also uh, yeah before eating also we should remember the name of lord right govinda or <clears throat> hari madhava whatever name you like to chant right prabhu ji this um, we can say brahma arpana yeah you can say that basically bringing the mood of devotion to that action right that's what we are trying to do in for that matter you can do that same thing before you start your works before you start your cooking spiritualizing life means what this is what it is before you do any action remember god you can be a software engineer you can be see how how much things change just by chanting one name of lord just remembering god before you do a, a, your action whatever it is for attending class you know before cooking before you know waking up your child anything just remember god and see how it is it's going to be different okay you have the helping hand of god in the action okay uh oh ma mantra is also great uh, anybody can chant ma mantra in ma offering mantra and has no restriction yeah. yes any time any day you can always chant yeah, okay yeah. that's Arriba. the best thing yes, yes. hari krishna before eating food hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari very good if you can do it like that okay okay thank you prabhu ji yeah i have to go now yes uh, hari krishna thank you prabhu ji hari thank you prabhu ji oh, thank you very much everyone. thank you prabhu ji hari krishna prabhu ji hari bol prabhu hari krishna prabhu hari bol open them sir